Ever wondered why going outside can make you feel so good? It's something to do with sound and frequency. For example, if you stand on the edge of a cliff and close your eyes, I'm sure you will feel the precipice and see it in your mind, even though your eyes are closed. If you're outside in the country, you will hear the birds and the wind and you will hear echoes which you may not be consciousness of. Meaning all the sounds enter your ears and your subconscious brain processes them without you needing to be conscious of them. But all things, even thoughts themselves and consciousness itself has a frequency and a vibrational value. And sound has always been one of the easiest things with which to measure frequency. A better name for frequency is actually resonance and this is where I get to tell you and talk about the Schumann resonance which is of course a frequency or a wavelength as most people like to think about it. In the year 1951 in Munich, Germany a scientist came upon a discovery which without knowing could possibly change the world. His name was Professor Winifred Otto Schumann. One day at the University of Munich, Professor Schumann was teaching his students about the physics of electricity and about how a sphere within a sphere can create electrical or energetical tension and his students were having difficulty in understanding this matter. And so he decided to take a physical example which was understandable to his students and ask them to calculate it based on his example. Because Schumann's students had struggled to understand that this meant there should be a frequency, he gave them the Earth and the ionosphere as an example to see the sphere within the sphere and told them to calculate the frequency from the distance and the tensions involved. After having asked them to calculate the tension between the Earth and the ionosphere, he himself actually didn't know, so he himself began to calculate and finally arrived at a conclusion, at a resonance which was 10 Hertz. He didn't really realize the importance of this because it was just an experiment to show the resonance and the frequency and the relationship between the Earth and the ionosphere, which were composed of a sphere within a sphere. But this, of course, was a world-turning event because this meant, of course, that our planet had a pulse and a resonance and a frequency. Professor Schumann didn't really see this huge importance and how it relates to absolutely everything in this universe and to life itself on Earth and elsewhere and to existence itself. He didn't really take it seriously, but he did publish an article which ended up in the back pages of a German scientific publication and didn't really get taken any notice of by the scientific community in that time. This conclusive mathematical formula of 10 Hertz came to be known as the Schumann Resonance and now before I continue about resonance, frequency and wavelength, which is infinite in its values, I would like to talk about the sphere within the sphere, which strangely enough exists as a sculpture in multiple locations around the world. This sculpture, for example, is from Arnaldo Pomodoro and is found in the Cortile della Pigna in the Vatican in Italy. Here is another version also, all from Arnaldo Pomodoro 
and this one is in the Hirschhorn Museum Gardens in Washington DC. There are many other versions to be found around the world such as in the Vatican Museum in Rome and the Palazzo della Farnesina as well as well as in the Piazza della Libertà in Pesaro, Italy. There is one to be found in Trinity College in Dublin and in the United Nations headquarters in New York. The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond, Virginia, USA and in Tehran Museum of Contemporary Art in the country of Tehran. You can also find one in Tel Aviv University in Israel and in the University of Berkeley in California. There is also one inside the American Enterprises Group Limited Corporation headquarters in Des Moines or Des Moines, Iowa in the United States. There is one in the De Young Museum of San Francisco in California and one in the Columbus Museum of Art in Columbus, Ohio. There is one inside the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis and one in the Hakone Open Air Museum in Hakone, Japan. So back to the Schumann Resonance and how does it relate to sound and frequency, wave and particle, transformation of the self and how did it get discovered? And how does it relate to living conscious sentient beings and to the rhythm of life itself? Hans Berger's role in the discovery. The importance of the Schumann resonance became apparent through a discovery made by Professor Hans Berger 30 years earlier who was the first person to use an EEG machine made by himself to be able to measure electrical frequencies being emitted from the human brain, meaning brain waves. Despite the scientific community wanting to give it his name, he decided to call this wave simply the alpha wave. And so back 30 years later, shortly after the discovery of Professor Schumann's resonance wave, one of the students of Hans Berger, whose name was Dr. Anke Muller, happened to stumble across a old, well leafed over scientific journal in the corner of the room, or of the lab, better said, and uh, happened to just stumble upon the article written by Professor Schumann regarding the Schumann resonance. Dr. Anke Muller read Professor Schumann's article several times and then realized that the frequency which was being mentioned in Professor Schumann's Schumann resonance was one and the same as the frequency being measured in the brain waves which he was measuring in the laboratory for his superior Hans Berger and he immediately saw the relationship and got very excited indeed. This means that the frequency of the human brain waves recorded by Hans Berger were identical to the frequency of the wavelengths measured and calculated by Professor Schumann in, the, in his formula and that human brain waves oscillate at the same frequency as the frequency of the Earth itself. Dr. Anke Muller contacted Professor Schumann and asked him if he would wish to investigate further due to the extreme similarity in the measurements and Dr. Schumann then agreed and took some of his laboratory assistants to make experiments with lightning passing down to the earth through the ionosphere to calculate 
the exact frequency of the Earth, which turned out to be exactly 7.83 hertz. The frequency of a wave is measured in a unit called hertz. This means the number of oscillations that are made within one second when you make a sound or when something vibrates. Some wavelengths have been measured which fluctuate on a size that is only a billionth the size of an atom. And other wavelengths have been measured which are almost the size of the universe itself. And so it is assumed that waves and the size of wavelengths or the fluctuate, the oscillations of the wavelengths range from the smallest to the largest on an infinite scale. All variable frequencies are therefore most probably infinite. All of this attracted the attention and immense interest and curiosity of Rutger Weaver from the Max Planck Institute, a highly acclaimed scientist. He became so fascinated that he created an experiment by making a bunker in order to investigate what he called the circadian rhythm. This was in the early 1960s and the experiment was to investigate the circadian rhythms of man. The real meaning of the word circadian rhythm is the rhythm that is programmed into the daily and nightly cycle of all forms of life. Students would spend weeks at a time locked inside the bunker, shielded from all of the magnetic waves and other kinds of waves coming from the earth itself inside the bunker. And the experiment went on over a period of 30 years of time. This means that the students were completely isolated from all the magnetic waves of the earth and the atmosphere around them. And after a while, they began to feel ill from being deprived of the circadian rhythm of day and night and the magnetic information and data which is usually absorbed by the human being or by living beings. But what they didn't know was that the professor was sometimes introducing through a magnetic emitter uh, a frequency, a magnetic frequency of 7.83 hertz, which is of course, of course the Schumann frequency. And when he did that, uh, the subjects, the students began to feel better and their performance and their norm began their normality began to return from this it became obvious that the schumann resonance had a definite positive effect and a definite relationship between the earth and human brain waves that they were aligned to each other Different brain waves can be measured with performance, creativity, stress, anxiety, and the immune system, and all other forms of phenomena which can occur within the mind and the heart of the sentient being as an experience, which is all frequential, meaning dependent on frequency. This is of course agreed upon by scientists but also by metaphysicists, and especially those who have studied the Schumann frequency. Uh, but it is also admitted by uh, molecular and subparticle, so uh, quantum scientists who experiment with the material world in the quantum realms, the microscopic and submicroscopic realms, that absolutely everything in the material universe vibrates at its own particular frequency. Now, the question arises is that does the change in frequency change the state of matter? And do 
emotions and thought formations emit different frequencies that can be measured eventually by some kind of instrument and if so how will they relate to the Schumann resonance when tested and compared between a being who is happy and balanced and a being who is disturbed and unhappy and unbalanced and to compare to see if the Schumann frequency has any relationship to this. And my other thought experiment is to take the Schumann frequency, or better said, the Schumann resonance, uh, and experiment with looking at what I would begin to call the four basic states of matter, which are solid, liquid, vaporous or gaseous, and um, uh, temperature. And I would separate temperature from these four basic elements as a catalyst and say that temperature is heat or the absence of heat. Actually, there is no absence of heat. There is just temperature and it is ever lower or ever higher. And that to apply temperature to any substance will change its state from any of the other three remaining states of matter, which are solid, liquid and gas or vapour. And it is the fourth element, which is heat, which transforms them. And so in this thought experiment, we can take H2O, hydrogen, two parts and oxygen, one part. So two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen which we know as water, which most people think of as a liquid. But actually H2O can exist in solid, liquid or vaporous slash gaseous form. And this is achieved when H2O changes its temperature. Yeah. And so if you look at the basic table of elements, you will find H2O. And you take H2O, if its temperature is below zero degrees centigrade, as we measure it on planet Earth, then it will be solid, or as humans call it, ice. And, but we would not call lava, rock, uh, ice, even though it is solid lava. Yeah. And so, in this thought experiment, when we change the temperature of H2O, it will change from solid, or as we say, ice, to liquid, or as we say, water, or to gas, or as we say, steam. And the only thing that changes that is temperature, which is what elemental magicians and metaphysics believers would call the element of fire and it is why the hermit sages and the rishi in india and the hermits of the thai hermit tradition and the ancient meditators of old and the philosophers who understood the elements and how to control them understood that it was temperature which changed the frequency of how the molecules of any material substance vibrate. The resonance is changed and the state of matter is changed. And how does the catalyst of temperature in relationship and conjunction with the other three states, or as magicians call them, elements of earth, air, and water, earth, water, and air, or solid, liquid, and gas, where the Schumann resonance comes into play with the element of fire, or, as scientists call it, temperature. And that was the end of Quantum Dhamma, part one, 
resonance with reality.